The Forum at 8 with Polani Guala. 8 after 8. Good morning to you. Welcome to the Forum at 8 here on SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader. Well, reports of the death of a man believed to be among those hospitalized after allegedly inhaling pepper spray at the ANC Nelson Mandela's memorial lecture. Those reports, of course, uh, coming through overnight last night. The incident occurred in Shayandima outside Tohyando in Limpopo on Tuesday. Uh, it followed a scuffle that broke out between ANC Youth League members and the MK military veterans cadres just before President Jacob Zuma delivered the memorial lecture. We're looking at that incident. We're looking at what happened to where those scaffolds are concerned. And uh, we'll be taking your thoughts a little bit later on. 0891-104-208. Uh, 0891-104-208. Also remember, you can send me an email at gualax at sabc.co.za. Gualax at sabc.co.za. Uh, we take SMSs at 34701. 34701. Let me quickly welcome our, gu- our guests then on the program this day. Let me start with Mr. Aubrey Machikri. He's a political analyst and research fellow at the Helen Sussman Foundation. Mr. Machipka, good morning. Uh, good morning, Robert. Thanks indeed for your time. I'm also joined on the line uh, by Mr. Keith Koza. He is the spokesperson of the African National Congress. Mr. Koza, good morning. Morning, Robert. Thanks indeed for your time. Also, Brigadier Hangwa Nim Laudzi speaks uh, for the Limpopo Police. Uh, Brigadier Hangwa Nim Laudzi, good morning. <coughs> Brigadier Nim are you there for me? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for your time. Perhaps I should start with you, Brigadier, mm. because firstly, I would like to get confirmation from the police. Do you know about the death of this man? Well, we only heard about it from your colleagues Kolani, uh, in the media circles that there was this death. Uh, and in our own investigation, um, we we did phone the accounting station in Marble Hall to check if there was any inquest docket opened. Uh, and to this far, nothing has been opened. So we cannot confirm or deny Okay. Uh, that that incident really took place. All right, uh, I can just conf- uh, tell you that it, it was for our part confirmed by the health authorities in the province. They did indeed uh, confirm that there w- is one person who died, even though they couldn't directly link his death to the uh, incident there, but the person was apparently there. But but l- let's talk about what happened on Tuesday. Please take our listeners through exactly what happened uh, that led to those scuffles. Look, um, we started with our preparations uh, since last week, and we knew that um, during the day we will have uh, um, troublemakers, as we can put it that way, uh, who will be coming because of our own operational plans that we had. Um, as to what actually transpired inside, you know, this was a political gatherings. We know there are tensions that are <clears throat> have been filtering in um, for some time now. And uh, yes, um, there were people who came into the hall or to the, into the church, and uh, there were gestures that were made, and some of the security members from the um, ruling party were not happy with it. A scuffle broke out, and um, yeah, we had to come in actually to go and contain the situation so that things uh, should uh, move smoothly, and we managed to do that by taking out the five uh, um, people who were actually giving, I mean, who were pointed out as troublemakers. We then took them out completely from the, 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 the venue, uh, bundled them into a van, and uh, we then released them outside of the parameters of that uh, uh, event and gave them a stern warning that they should not set foot into that area uh, in which they complied. Uh, obviously, um, that did not set well with the other people who were also part and parcel of that group. Uh, we did have run-ins with a small group of people, uh, but we, 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 we knew that um, we, we have members on the ground and we managed to contain everything. There were some stones thrown to us, uh, but nothing was reported that was serious. Uh, and uh, we are happy that uh, we managed to, to, to protect the state president and also the VIPs that were attending uh, that function. Well, firstly, you say that you, you knew that there were going to be uh, people who may cause trouble. Uh, how did you know that? Well, we, we we cannot actually give you details on how we knew, but look, in every event, we have to have uh, plans in place what would happen uh, we have a prov- i mean we have a, a joint operational uh, uh, center uh, that deals with such kind of things and our own uh, collection of information as well um, uh, gave us an indication that we need to be on our toes to make sure that this uh, event is not uh, uh, disturbed in any way right people were assaulted who assaulted people there well uh, look- specifically i'm talking about Ruzani ludere who was assaulted 
Well, uh, well, Ruzani can be able to tell you exactly who was assaulted. People were pointing fingers at the police. We are not responsible for that. Uh, it was on national TV. Everybody knows what happened inside. They saw it. Uh, ours was to protect uh, him as well, because if it, were, if, if it was not for us who were to protect him and his other uh, colleagues, uh, I think something bad might have happened. So we had to quickly run in into the, into the event and, 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 and take them out. I'm going to come back to that question in a minute, but there was also, it's alleged, pepper spray uh, was, was fired there. Do you know anything about that or, or was discharged? Pepper spray, you, uh, we can confirm that it was um, disengaged, um, but it's obviously it, it was during the scaffold and the police cannot be held responsible for but that. But who, who disengaged it? Well, the, 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 the security people inside uh, from the ruling party uh, might have done that. Might have or did they? Well, we don't know because we don't, I'm not sure who, who it was. But but you're saying it wasn't the police? No, it's not the police. And also the assault on Ruzani was not by the police? No, it's not the police. So you are, you, the, by implication you're saying that it's the ANC security? Well, look, the people who were inside the hall, they were people who were deployed by the ANC to, to, to do the security functions. Ours was to make sure that we, we controlled the outer part and we did have members inside. But uh, those were put strategically, not to deal with any other issues. But, I mean, we had a plan in place. So it can never be pointed to us to say the police are responsible. That's well, what but, we but, but our, our, I, what I'm interested in also mm. is to know the, uh, the division of labor, um, believe, the chain of orders between the police and the ANC security. Who does what? Was it not the police's responsibility to go and, and, and deal with uh, people who were obviously perhaps causing chaos? There was a group of people. There were a lot of people out there. We don't know whether the, from which organization they were coming from, but some of them we know. I mean, we know about these things. They do happen everywhere. Um, our responsibility, uh, Tolani, is to protect uh, the, 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 the event itself, and that is what we have done. And I'm quite sure that within, between the ourselves and the, the ruling party, there were plans that were also put in place to make sure that that uh, event... Um, this, remember, you are having a state president who's coming into, 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 our, into our, 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 our yard. And uh, as, as the police, we have a responsibility, irregardless whether he's coming as an ANC member or as president. But the fact of the matter is that he is our number one, and we have to make sure that um, he, he is well protected, and also as well as the other VIPs that were also attending that, uh, that yeah. function. But my question is really in terms of maintain, maintenance of order here. Clearly, it's the police's responsibility. Constitutionally, uh, you have a responsibility to maintain this order here. But how do you work with the security of the ANC? Who takes what responsibility? We are the custodians. Uh, uh, we are the custodians, we are the ones who are responsible for maintaining a law and order, uh, and that is what we have done. The ANC have got their own, um, um, uh, what do you call it, people, uh, or security um, people that, have, that they work with or during their own functions, and uh, we work together very well. Not, this is not the first time that we are having this thing. And um, what happened transpired inside just an unfortunate situation. Um, those people who went in there, there was a lecture about the, I mean, um, that it was a lecture that was supposed to have been conducted without any incidents. But if people would themselves they decide to do things uh, the way they want to do them, as it was shown on, on, on the national TV, then obviously uh, things might, I mean, this couple, those couples will happen. But, but let me, let me ask you a specific day, one. You, you, our, our, at the end of the day, we are the ones who are supposed to have, I mean, we are the ones who are responsible for the security, but at the same time, the ANC is also a partner in this. Is the ANC security legally allowed to fire or disengage pepper spray in a hall full of about 3,000 people? Well, that is, uh, if there are if people who are not happy with what transpired, uh, yes, uh, I mean... It's not about the, happiness, it's no. about legal, no, legally saying, are they allowed. people are not happy with what transpired inside, uh, they have got the right to go and open up a case. And no, wait, we will be but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not say, talking about happiness or not yes. happiness, but I'm saying legally, are they allowed to do that? Legally, no one is allowed to do that. There are instances that you can use that, but it depends on the situation as well, whether your life is in danger or not. Uh, security companies, they do have paper sprays, and if you feel that that you have the right to do that. You can even stand in court to say that my life was in danger. Yes, you are able to do that. So, so legally, they are allowed to do that? Yes, they are.
Oh, okay. All right. Let me. Let me. You know what? Let, just please hold the line for me for for my other guests as well because I would like to bring them on in this discussion. Oh, what what, what happened on uh, Tuesday? There. Please give me your overview. I, I just have one question before before I proceed. Mm. Um, um, in, in the representative of the South African Police Service you have online mm-hmm. says that the the young man who was assaulted mm-hmm. was rescued by the police, and if he had not been rescued, something terrible would have happened. My question is, from whom did they rescue this young man? In other words, the police who, who rescued him. In their report, when they reported, who did they say was assaulting this young man? If it was not the police themselves. Brigadier? Uh, I did not hear that one. Sorry. You said that a young man mm. uh, was rescued by, mm. by the police. And yes. if, if you did not rescue him, something bad would have happened. But from whom did you rescue him? I, I really don't know how to answer that one because I mean people we 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 saw that thing on TV. I mean that that is. Well, that but is you're obvious. making an assumption really? that everybody saw it on TV. Yeah. So it, what happened is that there was a scaffold inside. Yeah. And we were busy because there were other issues that we were dealing with outside. And um, once we heard that there was scaffold inside, we also um, gave an instruction to other members who were on the ground to say go and see what is happening. And when they got inside, they saw that there were people who were being assaulted. And now to ask me or who those people were, people who were wearing camouflage. Who is the no police? And they are the ones who managed to get inside and grab them so that they cannot be a, any other feather. So, uh, so he was rescued uh, from the people police. who were wearing camouflage? Yes. Who are those people? Um, well, I could say that from uh, those are were m- m- members who were attending the functions. So members who were attending the function were, were also assaulting people? Well, that is not... Um, the, well, I don't know. Um, but because what I'm saying is that we have members from the security, uh, from the ANC. If there were security from the ANC, then I can confirm that but, one. But what does the police report say? Who were those people? Who were those people? Tolani, it was members from the ANC security branch. All right. So, so the police report currently... Just one, more, one more question. Okay, go ahead. Um, the, the question to the brigadier um, is this. Is the assault by a citizen or a group of citizens of another citizen a crime? It is. If it is, it is. It. Did, such, did, such, did such an assault, as far as he knows, whether he saw it on TV or cleaned it from reports that were given to him, did such an assault by a citizen or a group of citizens on another citizen or care in that hall? And if it did, are they going to investigate? We can only investigate if there are charges that are brought. Um, if somebody comes to us and say we want to open a case of assault, then we will be able to investigate. But however, uh, just to add on that, we had a provincial prof jock or a prof jock that was a, um, at, at the venue. A report will also be, it has to be, to, 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 to be, to be, I mean, we have to write a report that will be sent to the National Commissioner. And I think that is the prerogative of the Provincial Commissioner to do that. And I think uh, until such time, if those people who are also assaulted, they themselves, they decide to come and open a case, and we will gladly do that without any fear or favor. Okay. All right, let's bring in Mr. Koza here, Ufume Aubrey. Uh, Mr. Koza, the implication uh, from some quarters is that security, of, of one, you had citizens assaulting citizens there, um, and, and that security was heavy-handed. What is the response of the ANC? Mr. Koza, are you still there? Have we lost Mr. Koza? Uh, we seem to have lost Mr. Koza. We're going to put him. Uh, we're going to put a call back to Mr. Koza because that's the implication created here. Yeah, Aubrey, uh, how, you, you, you've asked your questions, but I would like to get your view then on what may have happened there. Before I even come to that, there's a general point I want to make. Something I've been worried about since the 1980s, mm-hmm. and something which worried me last year when the Youth League organized this uh, economic freedom uh, march, and and that is the use of barbed wire as a method of crowd, crowd control. Um, I personally believe uh, we must mount an international campaign against the use of barbed wire in the belief that it is a barbaric method of uh, crowd control. Now, having seen what barbed wire does in the 80s, 
during the struggle, I'm quite shocked that the ANC can use barbed wire um, to, to, to protect its leader or its leaders or its functions against other citizens. Having seen what barbed wire can do um, when, they, when there are problems related to crowd control. And therefore, it is my strong belief that we must mount a campaign against the use of barbed wire as a barbaric method of uh, crowd control. Having said that, what, what we saw the uh, day before yesterday says a lot, not about the event itself, but about the state of the ANC. Because for me, there, are, there were two problems, if we must just reduce ourselves to the incident at, uh, at the lecture. Mm. Firstly, you have one group uh, which has no sense of occasion, one group which goes there to disrupt a lecture in honor of former President Nelson Mandela, thus betraying a lack of occasion, a lack of a sense of occasion on their part. And then inside uh, the venue, you have citizens or a group of citizens, um, as alleged, uh, clad in uh, camouflage who assault another group of citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, according to reports, this group of citizens are members of uh, uh, MK veterans, Mkonte Wesizwe veterans. Now, what worries me there is the lines are becoming blurred between the role of the police and the role of MK veterans in these uh, functions, because clearly there is a difference between people who play the role of marshals making sure that there is order, and people play the role of uh, making sure that there is sufficient security and take what effectively look like brutal police measures on their part. Hmm. And, and my worry is this. There is a very thin line between a group of citizens who are referred to as MK veterans and that group of citizens behaving like a militia. And therefore we must be careful that when it comes to security issues at such functions, the lines are very clear, are drawn very clearly between the role of uh, the, the police and the functions that must be performed okay. by MK veterans. Because then what you are going to have is an escalation of tension between those who lack a sense of occasion and those who seek to protect those functions. All right. Let, let, let's get a response from the ANC here. Mr. Koza, you've heard uh, the both sides of the story here. Yeah. No, Kolo, let me start by saying um, the, there was, of course, an unfortunate incident that happened where people had to be escorted out of the lecture venue in Xi'an. And in the process, a scaffold broke out and we, we were inside, and we do not know what, how did it escalate to that point. Like it has happened before elsewhere, when people were trying to disrupt, they were escorted out and were handed over to the police. And the expectation would have been the same, that even in this instance, people would have been, would need to be escorted out and handed over to the police, or be escorted outside of the perimeters of the lecture venue. Yeah. It's coming out, and I think it's a matter that the province would need to deal with to try and find out what happened. In the same way we did in the Western Cape, ask the province to deal with the matter and advise the, the circumstances of the incident that happened sure. inside the lecture hall. All right, but let me pick up on this. Because in the Western Cape, yep. and you're making the differences, in the Western Cape, I don't remember any civilian assaulting another civilian. Well, well, the way people who were injured inside the hall. Yes. It was not as a result of the police. For mm. instance, the SABC journalist was badly cut. Sure, sure, actually. Yeah. The eye. There was an incident you, you are right. that went out badly. Ugly, actually, and people. Somebody was injured. But the point, I'm sorry, the point I was making was about uh, the, the the security assaulting civilians. Yeah, that's why I'm saying, Golani, in the process of the people be of people being escorted outside of the venue, it's it's what we need to 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 establish what happened, which led to that turning up in the way 
Okay. All right. Terrible line. Let me do this. Let me take a, a quick commercial break. I need to do that. And and uh, we'll, we'll also just be taking the news headlines and our regular updates at this time. But we'll open the lines as well. 891 We'll get more explanation from Mr. Koza uh, after all our updates. Let's take a commercial break. We are revisiting the Tuesday incident in uh, Tohoyando. Uh, of course, you remember that President De- Jacob Zuma was delivering a lecture there, the Nelson Mandela Lecture, the 7th ANC Centenary Lecture. It took place in Venda. Um, there was chaos, and uh, we are revisiting that, looking at what happened exactly, who should take some blame or responsibility for what might have happened. This especially on the back of the latest news then, that a man may have died as a result of um, the pepper spray that was fired or disengaged uh, in that particular hall. Uh, r- reports coming through ye- late yesterday. Of course, the Brigadier Hang Wanim is unable at this time to confirm those reports, which were indeed uh, re- com- re- confirmed by uh, the health authorities to the SABC a little earlier on. Uh, my guest on the program at this time, Keith Koza, speaks on behalf of the ANC, but I'm also joined by Mr. Aubrey Machikli, who is a political analyst and research fellow at the Helen Sussman Foundation, together uh, with uh, Brigadier Hang Wanim who speaks for the Limpopo Police. I'll be Taking your calls in a minute on 0891 I've already got a lot of people on the line, Anonymous, uh, Mandla, Mohammed, a lot of emails as well coming through and SMSs. But Mr. Koza was uh, explaining the events from the ANC's point of view before we broke for the news. Mr. Koza, again, let, let's give you an opportunity to take us through how the ANC saw the things, the events unfolding on Tuesday. Yeah, as I was saying that uh, the incident was unfortunate, it was unexpected that it would happen in the manner it happened, but would ask the province, as usual, to look into the matter. But I think what is important is to say that uh, um, I, I've noted uh, Mr. Machipri took out the barbed wire and so on, and that uh, it's, it, it's a matter that needs to be reopened for discussion. And I think that uh, uh, Bob Wire was used by the police only because they did not All right, have some... any fencing around it that would have assisted with crowd control. And the police used it just to, to determine the boundaries where the, the parameters of the lectures would be and how people would enter in the People coming in were invited. Mm. And uh, you then have to have uh, control measures in place. The alternative would have been to deploy uh, police all around the building. And I don't think that is a cost-effective measure in terms of the use of the police. You look at issues like the incident around Lutus, when people were violent and so on, what do you do? Mm. Do you put police... Uh, uh, you know, police up where they can be attacked, hmm. or do you put a babwa to prevent people moving into an area where they are prevented from okay. from entering? Right. And I don't think the decision to use babwa uh, was used negatively, but it was used to determine the parameters within which uh, there should be control in terms of crowd control, All right. but, but also in terms of emergency control. I just want to would have controls in, that, in, sure. in, in place. The, the barbed wire issue, I suspect we may have to talk about it uh, in the months to come still. But I would like to go back then to the issue of the briefing of the ANC security, um, who then, it appears, assaulted certain individuals and discharged this pepper spray. What was the briefing from the ANC, and what do you take from the fact that now security is said to have uh, 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 assaulted people? No, no, no. Remember the the MK uh, the MK contingency that comes to the lectures are people who are protecting the, the ANC flame. They are there with a specific brief. They protect and guide the flame and the flag of the ANC. And then you do have ANC security that is assisting in terms of uh, because they know our leadership. Because the police, for instance, if we go to Toy and all. Not all police would know who's who in the ANC. You do have a security that liaises with the police in terms of planning, but also in terms of how to handle emergencies mm. inside of the hall. And it, 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 it's a matter that is discussed, as the brother Dia was talking about, there is always a joke 
where the ANC security and police would meet and sit and discuss. So the issue, the ANC security at that point, when when some individuals were escorted, the ANC security was not involved in that incident. It was people who were guarding the flame to people out of the hall. And, and, and also, what is important is that, what I said earlier, the expectation would have been that these people who were escorted were either handed over to the police or asked to be escorted mm. outside of the, 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 the parameters of, of the lecture venue. All right. Yeah. So in other words, what you're saying, Mr. Koza, yeah. is that the people who assaulted uh, Mr. Ludere were MKMVA. The people who discharged the, the pepper spray were MKMVA. But the question is, do they, are they, I mean, uh, in what capacity? Are they registered as a security organization? Well, well uh, what, what happens, uh, uh, Colan, in terms of the protection of the flame of the ANC, all is that sure that nothing happens to the flame. It is protected, and people can't just, you know, everybody would want to touch the flame, and, 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 and everybody would want to have to it. So for its protection, you have a team of people that protect it. And as to how the, the whole situation escalated to a point where people are protecting the involved in escorting people outside, I, I, I'm not certain because we mm-hmm. saw the, that as it, it was escalating as they were escorted out. Okay. So the issue here was that it planned to happen. Uh, it's something that happened unplanned, and it was dealt with in a particular way. But that's why we're saying the province will have to look into the matter what okay. happened. All right, let's take some calls here uh, and and uh, just get people's views on it. Let's start in Limpopo. There's Mantla on the line. Apparently, who was there at the event? Mantla, good morning. Yes. Hi. Go ahead for me, please. Mantla? Have we lost Mandla? We seem to have lost Mandla. All right, Mandla, please call us back. Let's go to Anonymous here in Johannesburg. Hello. Hello, Tolani, and morning to your guests today. Yeah, welcome. Tolani, I just want to raise two quick issues here. Mm-hmm. I think we, we need to be careful of what the uh, MKVA did to, to those people there. We, we need to separate the powers. I think here it's an abuse of power by the MKVA. And what happens, you, you remember the spear issue. The security guard actually man, manhandled that guy who defaced the picture of the uh, ANC president. And there was uproar about that uh, security guard. He was expected to be arrested and everything. And now the MK did, did the same thing to, to, to Ludere there, and nothing has been said. And, and I just want to say to the brigadier there, I think he's speaking in tongues. If, if somebody is assaulted, are they waiting for that uh, somebody that has been assaulted to, 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 to lodge a case, or are they just going to stay and watch people being killed, then that will, that's when they will take action? I think Brigadier here is misleading the community. He just has to stand up and say he's afraid to just mention that the MKVA were the people that assaulted those people. Okay. I don't and, and, and quickly, Colan, yeah. I'm not sure maybe this is because of the MK received training. They came back. They never went to war. And I think maybe they, they are full of actually anger or maybe rage. Maybe they need something to, to actually deal with that rage. Because you can see everywhere they go, they seem to be full of energy to, to, to fighting people, really. All right. That's a view from Anonymous here in Johannesburg. Som Shola is also here in Johannesburg. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi. Welcome. Yeah, hi, thank you. I just want to say that uh, we must also... Uh, say that uh, the, the the objective of the provocateurs was successful. In other words, people who wanted to go and cause chaos at the lecture were successful. Hmm. They managed to break the decorum that fitted that occasion. And they must bear in mind that as much as they wanted to oppose what was happening there, there were people who are also members of, of that organization who wanted to make sure that things go well. Mm. So uh, the, 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 the police were between people who wanted to see the decorum of the occasion and people who wanted to disrupt it. We must bear in mind that uh, it's very easy to blame the police to blame everybody else, but we seem to be ca- to be becoming tolerant of the people who, say, who seem to have legitimized 
their role as provocateurs, as breakers of, 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 of good order at mm. very important and solemn occasion. Mm. And I think as a nation, we must step back and correct ourselves and correct our behavior. There seems to be a, 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 a trend which tolerates the behavior of the rogue elements within the ANC Youth League uh, or those people or former members, whoever they call themselves, who go in and break a very, very important occasions okay. and who do not seem to have a sense of history, a sense of, of, of respect for, for things that are being done. All I right. think that uh, while one w- would say t- c- care must be taken uh, by members of the public, including the, the, the veterans, but one must bear in mind that that was okay, an emotionally charged uh, environment. Okay, and it was a deliberate attempt to, to charge it emotionally. All right, Samsolo, let's uh, continue then. I'm going to get my guests to respond to the, the couple of calls that I've taken. By the way, you can send me more on 0891 Let me read SMS and I'm going to start with Aubrey perhaps for the responses here. Uh, somebody says, uh, what's the definition of MKVA? Uh, uh, the guys that protect the flame are young men, not near a veteran's age. Those are ANC people and they are not... Th- security. That's Ben. Another one says, in Pumalanga, during the memorial lecture, Lowfelt ma- uh, Massacre by Jackson Mtembu, MKMVA released live shots, protecting the flame as claimed in front of SAPS. No name. Uh, Peter says, what is happening to the ANC? The VA and the ANC Youth League. It's embarrassing, and the nation deserves an apology. Uh, another one says, this is not the first time these MK veterans assaulted people. They did the same thing on June 16 in Port Elizabeth. Um, Charles and Cape Town, the actions of the private security at the Brett Gallery indicate that such security uh, is often inept. Uh, there's also, what is the responsibility of the SAPS when they witness a crime being committed? Do they wait for a charge to be laid or must they effect uh, arrest? Perhaps I should start with Brigadier Mlaouds, just uh, on the back of that uh, question there, Brigadier. Well, I think I might, I would, I've already responded to that one, that uh, the situation necessitated us uh, to remove these people who were giving us problems. You know, but I think it's in, it's in response to the question that I asked earlier, yeah. and your response was that, well, no one has laid a charge There's yet. There's no charge that has been laid. But the person is saying, well, what should you be doing as SAPS? Should you wait for a charge to be laid, or where you see a crime being committed, if you should arrest the If a crime being people. committed, Tolani, there and there, we will be able to deal with the situation, and that is what we have done dealt with. We dealt with the situation there and there. Hence, we are saying that people must, de- you need to make sure that we, we separate the two. We are talking about an event. And if we were able to get in there and start arresting people, things would have been, uh, I mean, would have gone out of control. But is that, but, but, wait, but you arrested people outside. We have to make sure that 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 event goes on without any hindrance. But you, and did, the people you arrested who people outside. For that thing. Hence, we took them out and I give them a warning that mm. they should not set foot. But like I said, Colin, I said, they have the right. If they want to go and open a case of assault, they can go and open a case of assault and we will investigate it. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Machik? I'm, 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 I'm disturbed by what, by, what, by what I'm hearing here. Because we have a group of policemen who witness an assault of citizens by other citizens. And my police force is saying to me that when they witness such a thing, they will, they will arrest, effectively those who are being assaulted are arrested. And those who are doing the assaulting are not arrested. And, and the logic is that uh, you do not want as the police to spoil the event. In other words, the brigadier is, is conceding that there was a need to arrest those who were doing the assaulting. But in order not to do, I mean, in order not to spoil the event, they were not ar- ar- arrested. I, I, think, I think the brigadier must reflect on what he is really saying and the message he is sending to the nation here. Because it, it is a chilling and disturbing message that he, he is sending to the nation about what police will do under certain circumstances when they witness a crime being committed. Hmm. Brigadier? Look, I, I, I really don't know how far I must go with this one. I think we... we, we, we as far as the uh, truth takes to you. ...politicize the issue, and I don't want to be drawn to politics. We have a duty as, is as the police, and our duty is to protect anyone, any citizen of this country. There was a scaffold, and we do concede there was a scaffold. We had to go in and eject those people. They were handed over to us, 
And if there is any need for us to investigate that case, we will investigate it. That is where I want to leave it at. So at the moment, you don't see the need? No, I won't answer that one, Kutolan. (laughs) <laughs> All right, uh, let me read some more SMSs. And perhaps, Aubrey, I would like you to, res- to, to respond to what Somsholo was saying, because Somsholo is raising another issue that, of course, also you must look at it from the other side. And there's an SMS that says, no one is saying Malema's supporters came in to cause trouble. Malema kept tweeting comments as he was excited about it. Uh, MKMVA had to act. That's in But also a point that was raised by Somsholo, that you must also look at the fact that there were people who went there hell-bent uh, on disrupting the event. That is where I started. Sure. I, I said at, a, at, at the broadest level, what we saw on Tuesday is a statement about the state of the ANC. And secondly, you have a group of people who have no sense of occasion who went there to disrupt a lecture in honor of former President Nelson Mandela. Um, that is where I started. Mm. And, and the third problem here is that on both sides, then we saw a lack of maturity. In other words, on both the sides of those who lacked a sense of occasion, and in the response of uh, MK veterans, we saw um, a, a lack of maturity. But what we must not do, Colin, is to paint all MK uh, MVA members with uh, the same brush. Because I think, for the moment, I want to limit myself to that group of uh, MKVA members and say to them, but what they must remember is that they are representatives of Umkonto Wesiz. Okay. Mr. And translated, that means the spear of the nation. And they must be careful not to be seen to be the spear of affection instead of being the spear of the nation. All right. Mr. Koza will respond in a second, but let me take Anonymous again here on Johannesburg. Hello? Yeah, yeah hi. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, three issues. Number one, I think Brigadier Mulawuzi should actually come out and, 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 and give names. Uh, he must stop protecting names. He must say it's the MKMVA that had assaulted people. It, it, it would help a lot. And secondly, I think these guys, the MKMVA, have become a law unto themselves because clearly they are going to be doing this all the time whenever there are gatherings. Wherever they are, there will be people assaulted by them. And I think it, 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 it's quite strange because now we have the Department of Defense. And now we have young people who are, are supposedly members of the MKMVA who are now uh, sort of like a parallel military service to the Department of Defense. Hmm. Thank you oh. very much. That's uh, Anonymous here in Johannesburg. Philip is in Umsinga. Hello, Philip. Yeah, yeah, yes, Colan. Yeah, hi. You, you, you know, Colan, what I saw there was very much disturbing. You know, I don't care, I don't, I, I, I don't agree that uh, uh, the behavior of our youth that we saw there, particularly that fair guy who was heavily brutalized in, f- in full view of the media, in, in front of our adults who were there uh, uh, to honor uh, the day of President Mandela. And what shocked me was to was not to get a, a sense of, of, of agency from the president to actually call these things to order. Because these people, uh, Kolani, you must remember, Kolani, in case of then, three leaders within the ANC have died in the hands of other ANC members, supposedly by these same people who actually throw down the name. I am a former soldier of Mkondo Wesiza myself. You know, we have never been allowed, even by the constitution of Mkondo Wesiza during its existence, to enter the frail of cliques within the ANC. Okay. Because we had to preside over the entire organization and be able to defend the people. What I saw there was totally naive and okay. people fighting Philip? from Nadal to go and brutalize youth in that particular way. All right, Mr. Koza will respond, uh, but I need to take a commercial break. I'll read your emails, by the way, straight up. The Forum at 8 with Olani Guala. Some SMSs, uh, somebody says the provocateurs must also be arrested and charged with inciting public violence. Msinge Nim Simango. There's also an, a question from Itumeleng in Bloemfontein who says, a sign of change, is, a, is that a threat to the torch? Uh, also another SMS saying the problem of the ANC is President Zuma and the best solution is the ANC without Zuma. Um, another one says, so the ANC are above the law, be afraid. Ben says, uh, what's the definition of an MKMVA? He sent that uh, 
SMS twice. Let me read some emails here. There's one from Charles Matuludi who says, It's very confusing that the police, as the primary custodians of security to all events, are allowing paramilitary security measures discharged by paramilitary groups. The question is, who takes the blame when there's a loss of life in the presence of the police as the legitimate security personnel? Are all security groups working outside the police scope of work permitted to assault without a proper hand uh, hand in of those who disrupt the event to the relevant security authorities like the police? That's Charles Matuludi on email. Another email came through from uh, Noltando Kumalo uh, who says, maybe the ANC should send those security guards to Zilla in the Cape uh, because there's violence there. Uh, that's instead of distracting or dis- uh, deploying the army and we, when we have such energetic people who just want to fight and kill innocent people. Like the gentleman just mentioned, they are angry about something. Why don't they take it out on the criminals in the Cape, says Noltando Kumalo. Uh, another is, uh, email from Stan Lismelan in Daviton. Almost every day we see the ANC finding itself more divided and we cannot act like we don't know why. There's a group of comrades that does not approve of the decisions that are constantly implemented by the current ANC leadership. Hence, this is going to be continuous until it is, until there is a change of leadership. The current leadership is refusing to accept that it will never be accepted in some branches. Uh, thus, this foreign ideology of dictatorship is growing at a high magnitude. It's uh, you follow them or they will deal with you. That's an email from uh, Stanley Simelane in Daverton. Just perhaps uh, another one before I go to the line like, for one last caller. Uh, Mpo Ralukake says, if people are misbehaving in such events, must we pray? Barbed wire, uh, it has got nothing to do with apartheid. Please, your guest must not be talking uh, nonsense. That's Mpo Ralukake. Let me quickly hear from Mike in Fixburg. Hello, Mike. Yeah, hi, welcome. Yes, I, I, I want to come in on that issue, Polani, of the excessive force that uh, was used, which we all agree uh, that um, it was not a good thing. But let us also uh, agree that uh, it cannot be tolerated uh, that we have a group of people uh, who come to disrupt uh, events organized when it is not necessary for them. And I think we should begin Hmm. by saying, uh, what do you expect from people who want to protect the image of the organization um, and uh, an embarrassment that may come with that? What do we expect from them? Should they fold their hands and leave the situation to go out of hand? I think here, um, I'm also a bit worried that we look at... uh, only the assault uh, that took place. We don't look at what impact uh, uh, the action by those alleged youth league members would have been to the image of the of the ANC itself. Okay, Mike and Fixback, let me thank you very much and start uh, getting uh, last comments from my guests. Perhaps, uh, Mr. Koza, you've been quiet. Your responses. Yeah, well, let me start by saying that there is no paramilitary organization that that is operating within the ANC. This is an association of ex combatants of Mkondo West Secondly, let's uh, draw attention that this is the first incident that happened involving MKMVA members. Thirdly, uh, the incident that happened shouldn't have happened. Uh, we have said that. It was unfortunate it happened. But fourthly, uh, the, the the issue that keeps, you know, that there, there are elements who would, who would want to create no-go areas for certain leaders of the ANC. And, and, and they, they, they are partly for what happened. Because, you know, people, when you talk about Madiba, uh, we are going to honor Madiba for the role he has played. And there are elements who help and on ensuring that they deserve that Hmm. you know it becomes an emotional thing to some people we are not saying people must act in a manner that is not warranted the reality it becomes emotional that you know we protect the legacy of men okay all right let me get a last comment uh, from mr magic well i I think it is time for all members of the anc irrespective of who they support or do not support to step back on the, and reflect on how they want the nation to re, to remember this centenary year of the ANC. I think it's a year it should, 
that should be remembered for the ANC celebrating its achievement and role during the liberation struggle. It should not be a year in which uh, what will happen effectively. ANC members Mm -hmm. dishonor the memory uh, and legacy of those who sacrificed and died during the liberation struggle. All right. Let me thank you all for coming through. Obre the political analyst and research fellow at the Helen Sussman Foundation. I also thank Mr. Keith Koza, who's speaks on behalf of the African National Congress, as well as uh, Brigadier Hangwan Mlaudzi, who speaks on behalf of the Limpopo Police. I thank the team who put it all together for us. Ma Bubuluka, Meisho Shanzale, and Colin Lemawane, Forum at producer Jake Mukoma, technical producer Mark Prela, senior producers Lungi Lemabaso and Chili Dichibase, chief producer Bootsi Lukoto, executive producers Bosi Chane and Opri Sechi. I'm Olani Gwala, back again for you tomorrow, 6 to 9, here on SAFM. It is 9 o'clock, and that means time for Morning Talk. Cheers. Morning Talk. Cheers. Morning talk, cheers. Morning talk, cheers. Morning talk, cheers. Morning.